All right, friends, this is Ross, the Fig Boss. We're doing our first review today. We have a first fig review because this is the variety, guys, that has ripened first. <laughs> and it will, for many of you, ripen first. Um, it's not probably the earliest fig, the absolute earliest fig I grow, but it is up there. Um, it is definitely among the earliest figs I grow. And when we talk about <clears throat> extremely early figs, by the way, excuse me, is that we're thinking about things like Floria, Michurinska 10, Ronde Bordeaux. I think you guys can see me over here. Uh, we're talking about things like maybe Malta Black, Improved Celeste, a lot of the Celestes. Um, Rassi's Persian Unknown or Iranian Candy. There's actually quite a few of them that are really among that very early category. And when, when I think about figs that ripen extremely early, it's usually figs that uh, will form on the tree very early. They will visibly be shown on the tree very early. And then they will ripen roughly 70 to 75 days after they are visibly shown on the tree or on the branches. And that's, like I said, very, very early because most of them take about 90 uh, after they're visibly shown. And then some even take 120, 150, and those numbers can change dramatically depending on where you guys live. But this is a, a fig here, by the way. We haven't named it yet. It's called Campaneri. And um, as I said, it's extremely early. What else is really awesome about it is that it can very easily dry on the tree. Uh, it has very good resistances to spoiling and to mold and fermentation. Um, even though I would argue actually it has maybe uh, the wrong shape, it's definitely more of a round shape to it. Um, it also tends to crack a little bit um, and you know it might even split. So because it splits and because it may have cracks that actually makes it a bit more difficult for it to dry on the tree. But this fig has done exceptionally well, um, and this one here is almost dried. In fact, if I waited probably another maybe five days, and we had five days of maybe not totally dry weather, but at least very very minimal amounts, amounts of rain, um, we would certainly have a fully dried fig from this particular variety. It doesn't take much time. That's the beauty of it. Uh, the hang time is extremely short, I've noticed, again this year. And I think it even stands out to me as a, a, such a short hang time that it's actually quite shocking. Because I had really, from other years, I don't remember it being this particularly short. Um, by the way, it's tough to get in here and show you guys this particular tree. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit on this. What you can see for sure is that the productivity is extremely good as well. Uh, there's a, there was a fig on every single node. Every single leaf that there was, it put out a fig, which is very difficult to do um, because yeah, sometimes you'll get, you know, maybe uh, you'll miss a couple leaves and some of the leaves just won't be, won't have a fruit, but this one, it does. Um, so that's important, but, you know, going back to my other point real quick about the hang time is that it's so short that, you know, there's very little that can happen to this fruit. That's, that's the beauty of a short hang time, right? The fig is green and hard, and then it starts to swell and change color. Um, and then when that occurs, you count the number of days before you pick it. And on average, most figs are about seven, about seven or eight days here before I pick them. So they're gonna swell, expand, change color for about eight days before I actually pick them and eat them. Um, you know, obviously you can pick them at earlier days, but they're just not gonna be as good. Um, so I like to pick them usually on average around seven or eight days for most varieties. This one here is basically almost perfect at like day four or day five, which is insane because 
I've talked about this in other videos with like figs like De La Senora Hivernenka. Um, that really is the one that's really standing out in my mind as a very short hang time. I'm trying to think of others. But that fig has like a day three or even day four hang time. It's so short um, that you're able to even pick it earlier uh, because it's, it's just ripe. And when you're able to pick it earlier, less things can go wrong, right? So not only is the fig like I showed you, it's very, very productive, but I'm gonna eat every single fig off of it. I'm not gonna not enjoy any of the figs. You know what I mean? Like here in this climate, it's just quite difficult to, although our fig may put out 300 figs or 200 figs or 100 figs, how many of those am I actually going to enjoy? You know, my climate just isn't conducive for that. This fig, however, you're gonna enjoy every single one of them. Um, I can guarantee you that. As long as you come out here, and if there's gonna be a big rain, like there's gonna be tomorrow, we're gonna get like a, a half inch of rain. Uh, pick before that and you're golden. Um, you know, even a half inch of rain is not necessarily enough to ruin them either. And, then, and especially on in-ground trees that I'm, I'm gonna show you guys in a minute, because I have about, I love this variety so much, I have about like seven or eight of them, in, I think, in the ground. Um, something like that. This is, going, going back to the hang time really quickly, is that the hang time, as I said, it's, it's so short that you're going to enjoy all of them. You're not going to get hit by pests, by critters, by splitting, by rain, by, you know, any mold, fermentation, any of that nasty stuff. So you're going to enjoy them. So they're, they're enjoyed at a higher quality more consistently. That's, that's the key, right? We talk about, you know, what is the best tasting fig, Ross? What, which one has the best flavor? Um, but, you know, I, I might be Black Madeira, right? As most people would probably agree, or at least maybe like something like a Col de Dom. And yeah, I mean, Black Madeira as an example is a very tasty fig, and I think a lot of people would agree. But you know, how many black Madeiras do I enjoy? And how many of them do I get to that perfect, perfect, amazing state that makes me think it is the best tasting fig? Not many. Whereas Campanieri, as I said, it's every single one of them is at a high, high quality. So then I'm thinking to myself, well, this one is one of the best figs I grow or one of the best tasting figs I grow because yeah, maybe I get a one-off of black Madeira or maybe a handful or maybe 10 of them, but this one's producing way more fruits at a higher quality that to me, it's, it's hard to beat it. You know what I mean? It's just extremely difficult. So then, as I said, it's, it's a fig that can actually dry on the tree. And in five days from now, this actually I think is about day four, believe it or not. Um, so about maybe on day 10 or day nine or even day 15, let's say, I'd have a dry fig. By day 15, if you have a totally dried fig, I mean like totally dried. I'm not talking about like dried as in like it's shriveled. This one's shriveled. You know, I'm talking about like pretty much is what you would put in the dehydrator for a couple hours, pull it out and it's dry. You know what I mean? Like, and that's incredible. That is an unbelievable characteristic that people just, I think totally don't even know about that's even possible in a climate like this. Um, and don't pay enough attention to because the figs that have those extremely good drying capabilities where it happens quick, you know, a lot of figs happen or have the ability to dry on the tree. They have the right characteristics, right? They don't split. They have very few cracks. They have a high enough bricks. They shed water very well. They don't absorb the water very well uh, when it does rain. Um, you know, they, they have those characteristics, but um, they don't, it doesn't happen very quickly. You know, like uh, that's why I love Neruccio de Elba and Verdino del Nord so much is that those two figs dry so, so quickly. And it might be, part of it might be the size of the fruit. You know, the fact that Campanieri and Neruccio de Elba and, you know, there's other figs like Marseillaise and, and um, you know, I have this fig here, Pecciola Bianco, that should dry very, uh, fairly easily. There's, there's a number of them that usually are on the smaller size, oddly enough. Whereas you have a fig like Calamerna, which is typically the most commercially dried fig that you can, 
you can have, and even let's say Black Mission is also used widely in drying commercially, they're larger figs and, and they take a lot longer. You need a much drier climate to actually get a dried fig. So for someone like me in a humid place, rainy place, either we get a 15 day stretch of no rain, or let's say for Calamurna or Black Mission, it could be 30 days of no rain, or uh, you pick them and you sun dry them, which is another option. Also not really possible here, I think. Um, or you just have a fig like this that doesn't take very long at all for it to dry on the tree. Uh, and as the figs hang on the tree more and more and more, they taste better, better, and better. I mean, it's just how all fruit works. The fig is highly subjected to when you pick it. If they're not going to continue to ripen, although they will as they dry on the tree, they will certainly, or if, as they start to dry, that flavor will certainly start to concentrate. The sugars will not increase, but the water content will decrease, therefore making it seem like there's less sugar. This fig is just so, so beautiful. I mean, it is just striking, actually. Um, so it's a pretty fig. It gets these, this yellow green undertone to it. And then over top is this gray. Um, sometimes I've even, I've even seen like purplish colors, but typically this is a gray fig. Uh, and I've seen it extremely gray in the fall. Um, that I put a thumbnail actually, a, an image of it on my Instagram and Facebook. If anyone's interested, you could see what really how gray this thing gets. It's insane. Um, the shape, as I said, is, is more round and usually there's a longer stem, but this one's actually your Ciolato, like a black Madeira. So this is not good in terms of splitting and it, it's not the most split resistant fig. That's really the one thing I would say is not good about it. But the hang time is so short that it almost doesn't matter. You know, you know, if it is gonna split, it's gonna split on like day three or day four when this thing really becomes soft. Day one and two, you know, of swelling, it's not gonna split. Very little can happen at that point. So, and for many figs, it's not just this. So you really have a very short window of time where something wrong can, can happen. And even if it does split, here's the thing, the bricks is usually so high in this variety because it has those drying capabilities that it's not going to spoil. It's just going to continue on in its merry way being amazing. So, and, and you know, all, everything I've just said basically means that it's one of the best varieties that you can grow um, really in, almost in a ton of climates because that short hang time really makes it valuable in many, many places. You know, if I was in Southern, Southern California, the most perfect weather you had for a fig, maybe there's better options than this. But I'll tell you, getting a dried fig in a place like Southern California right on the tree is, is like, it's, there's nothing better than that, if you ask me. So this has a lot of value anywhere. Um, and it's extremely early. So if someone in Southern California, this is gonna be among the earliest figs you can grow and a nice option for something early in the season. Um, so yeah, I would argue, you know, based on everything I've just kind of said is that this really is one of the best fig varieties that you could have. Like just overall, it's like one of the best, you know, it's right up there with Hardy Chicago as really one of the best varieties. Same thing with probably Violet de Bordeaux. Uh, maybe even you could argue about a lot of the Celestes. Um, you could argue for maybe Ron de Bordeaux, uh, Moro de Caneva is another one. I have some other varieties that we're gonna kind of come, they're, they're really fruiting and they're gonna be joined in that little short category. A lot of the LSU figs, by the way, too, are in that category. Like LSU Huye, I think is really top tier. Uh, in that LSU purple too. So the point is though, is that, like I said, th this is really what I'm getting to is that this is the best, it is in my opinion, the best early variety you could grow. Um, 
at least very early variety. As I've talked about in other videos we did last year, it beats Ronde Bordeaux, it beats Pastelier, which is, both of them are insanely good figs. If you had either one of them, just feel lucky you have them. Um, and then, you know, the only other com comparison I can even make, there's two birds, two lovebirds over there doing their thing. But uh, the only other comparison I can make is to a hardy Chicago. And the question, <clears throat> the question is, is this earlier than a hardy Chicago or let's say something like Malta Black or Azores Dark? You know, some of the other hardy Chicago types I'm growing, maybe Sangue Dulce seems quite early. If it's among the earliest like Malta Black, which Malta Black is, then it's hard for me to really put one ahead of the other. I think they're so neck and neck for different reasons, right? They're not the same. They're equally as hardy, by the way. Um, you know, Campanieri, by the way, if we're going to compare the two, we, sh we should compare the two. Because if we really want to determine which is the best fig, pretty much just in general, it doesn't matter where you live, this is in the running for that, as, as well as Hardy Chicago, I think, personally. Because it just has every, it just checks every single box, you know. Uh, the difference is mainly, <clears throat> there isn't many because even Campanieri is one of the most hardy figs in the, in the world, in existence. This thing has said to survive negative four degrees Fahrenheit. Hardy Chicago usually survives about zero to five degrees Fahrenheit. So they're very, very hardy figs. Um, you know, they handle the rain well. They, of course, Campanieri, I would say, split more, splits more often. Whereas Hardy Chicago, the hang time isn't as good. The hang time is a little bit longer and the drying capabilities aren't as good. So it depends on what you're looking for. The flavor is roughly the same. I would argue the flavor isn't too different in terms of, yeah, they're not, they don't taste the same, but they're basically, oh, this fig is going to be so good, guys. I can already smell it. I cut, I cut open to it, and I can already smell just how amazing this is. Oh. Yeah, so the flavor is not the same between the two, but um, it's a similar quality to the flavor that you could argue they're very, very good figs. So I, I would rank them probably in the same, at the same level for flavor. Oh man, this thing just is melt in your mouth good right now. Holy moly. You can tell how soft this thing is just in my hand. The shape has completely, it's hard to, you know, keep its shape at this point because it's just so soft. This is a very, very good fig. And there, there's even, I think, a little bit of spoilage in there. Um, at least, it doesn't smell like it, but it looks like it's approaching that. It's been just so darn warm here. Maybe this fig, you know, would spoil a little bit for people in Southern California or something like that. All right, so basically, like we said, we, we talked about it to death. It's up there with the best. It's really tied, I think, for the best overall variety you could grow. And that's about anywhere. Oh, yeah. Oh. 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 <laughs> Guys, I'm telling you. This is like magic. I mean, it's amazing that nature has the ability to do this. This is the best fig I've had all year so far. I mean, I haven't had met that many, but between all the Brabas, we had a good Braba of Little Ruby. I've been eating away. Actually, I had a good Braba of uh, Juale Noir and good Braba of um, Montalcino Rosso. This Dotado Brabas were pretty good. And I even had some, I've been eating main crop, quite a few off of this tree now. This is, I think, approaching a five. This is like almost as good as it gets that you can ripen a fig. Oh, oh my God, it's just so jammy. 
nice and soft. It's like, it's almost buttery. It's like, oh my God, it's just, just so smooth, berry flavor, uh, great sugar content. Fantastic. You can tell the bricks is super high on that one. Um, it even is lasting. It's leaving an imprint on my tongue a little bit, um, like a nice wine. It's just so smooth and sweet. The berry flavor isn't like super intense, but it's there and it's strong. Um, it's, you got to really let it ripen, I think. And some people, when they have these, this fig, by the way, at least for me, is that it really takes a couple years for it to really show its true characteristics, its true nature. As many figs are like that, many varieties, you, you just, you're not gonna get the real deal right away. Um, and this is just one of them. In fact, I thought for a while actually that one of mine was mislabeled, one of my trees, until I ripened the fruits later on and realized that, oh, it is actually Campanieri, you know? Uh, sometimes the interior can be a bit amber, a bit strange, but as it ripens more, as it ages more, the interior turns more red and it's more typical in the colors. And I'm actually still waiting. The tree that we just ate that fig off of is not mature, still. And it's probably a, uh, I think it's a two-year-old tree from graft, if I'm not mistaken. Um, anyway, here is a in-ground tree I have in quite a little bit of, sh quite a low amount of shade. So I have it in different areas of the yard and it's doing really well. Um, this one, it's really taking its time to get its act together. This location, as I kind of said, just really isn't that great. I pinched it and a lot of the fruits now are forming. Um, I would argue it doesn't need a ton of light. But if it's in a lower light environment, it's a bit more difficult to, to uh, get it to have the fruit set that you're looking for. Um, but it is a very productive fig. If you give it the right amount of light, it will produce a ton of fruits. Here's another one over here that I have, which pretty much has, again, a, like a fig on every single node. Um, as I went further down on this tree, you can see that the fruits are forming even down here at the base. And this particular branch has a fruit on every single node or will have a fruit on every single node. Um, it is just overall very hardy. You can tell it's a very resilient. The leaves are very reminiscent of a hardy Chicago. They're very sandpapery like. And I've always wondered if that just says something about the fig, like in terms of its hardiness. If you really think about the figs that are very sandpapery, but you know, even Moro de Caneva has got that. I mean, they all kind of have that. I don't know. But they're, they, the leaves do remind me a lot of a hardy Chicago. They just have that, not necessarily the shape, although the shape is kind of similar, it's just like such a dark green, this exact shade of green, and it's very sandpapery like. So for me, yeah, it's great. I have two in the front where we're trialing their hardiness. They did survive this winter, but, but every tree survived this winter. So I can't really comment if the negative four degrees Fahrenheit is, is true. Um, at least 100% true, but I have no reason to doubt that it's not true. Here is uh, another one back in here. This is the one I originally thought could have been a different variety, but it is indeed Campanieri. Um, and you can see up here it's doing quite well. As I said, I think it really is, if given enough light, it will produce the fruits that you're looking for all the way down here at the base, you can see they just, they just go all the way up the branches. And it's so early that if you get a fruit like that that's forming, I'll probably have off the in-grounds, I may have some fruits by early August. So really, I'm not too far away. Although I've noticed that uh, 
with a couple of my tree, a lot of my trees this year, I had to come in here and pinch them to really encourage them to fruit. I don't know why that is exactly, but uh, given enough light, they will form those fruit buds. But there are some trees that just really struggle, um, unfortunately, for whatever reason. I think it may have something to do with the angle of these branches, but after pinching them, they're all fruiting now um, to a pretty ridiculous degree. And I wish that they had, I wish I had really had pinched a bit sooner. Um, yeah, so I'm just thinking there's something about that that I don't know if it's the light, a lack of light back in here, it's the angle of the branches, um, whatever it is, it's just that I had to come in here and pinch. And if you do pinch, you will see the fruit set that you're looking for. Um, and ideally, I think I should have pinched about a month ago. Let these new branches grow. Um, as you can see on these, these trees, they would have put out about three more shoots per fruiting branch. And on those three new shoots, I'd have a lot more fruits. I, I estimate it's at least 100% more, more figs, 100% more production. If just by pinching all these different branches, you will see 100% increased production. We have a video on that. It's called Rivers Pruning. So I'm thinking that's just gonna be the techniques that we're gonna use here. You can see like what happens when you pinch is that they form these new branches and the figs. This is a branch that kind of formed a while ago on its own. But imagine just like these three branches growing to some crazy degree. Um, you know, fast forward a month from now, they're gonna be, they're gonna look more, they're gonna be bigger than this branch right here. Then when they're that big, you pinch them again. And then you get, like I said, you double your production. So for me, um, that's what we're gonna be doing for the, in the future with these trees. Yeah, so that's Campanieri, guys. Again, I have so many of them throughout the yard. Uh, I got two over there, one over there. I got two in the front. I've got one over here on the south side. So I have them in every area of the yard just to see what the deal is. Um, some of them are not very mature just yet. So it is what it is, but it doesn't matter to me. They're coming along. You know, this one here is very shaded because of this pomegranate that's kind of taking up a space. I didn't think this pomegranate would get that big, but it is gonna fruit. So I'm really happy here, guys, to have, you know, really been able to share this variety with a lot of people. It's my little own contribution, I think, uh, is to really promote the awareness and to make these varieties more popular. You know, I did very something very similar with Smith, and a lot of people have Smith that didn't otherwise know much about it. I know a lot of people in the South obviously did for many, many years. But, you know, that's sort of my goal is to really help people grow these the most amazing fruits that they can, not just figs, but especially with figs because no one owns them. No one, pat, no one has patents over them. You can do whatever you want with these. You want to find a Verdino del Nord or a Neruccio de Elba, yeah, maybe the price is a bit high for a bit of time. But Campanieri and all these other figs, guys, they're going to be around forever. They're going to be around for a very, very long time. That's the goal. We're not introducing, we're not promoting, I should say. You know, I didn't find this variety. I'm only the one promoting it. I'm only the one saying, hey, this is an amazing variety. I've been doing this for a long time. I've tasted many varieties. I know all the characteristics of these, these damn things. You should be growing this for these reasons. And most people, you know, the unfortunate part is that when they, when they like to do this kind of thing, they don't give great enough reasons or they don't give any reasons, you know? So I'm giving you guys all the reasons. I'm giving you the logic exactly the breakdown of why it is that I'm coming to this conclusion. And, uh, you know, for me, that gives me at least some sort of credibility. And therefore, we should be, you know, at least I think a lot of people are going to be finding Campanieri 
it's going to be in everybody's collection, at least among hobbyists. And then hopefully at some point, maybe 10 years down the road, it's gonna catch on so much that it's gonna be like in everyone's yard or anyone who wants to grow figs, this will be one of the options instead of just White Marseille or Brown Turkey or Celeste, you know, or Hardy Chicago or Villa de Bordeaux. This is going to be the one that I think people are gonna have the option to have, to enjoy. And that's what this is all about, right? Is to find the better varieties that people can just, you know, be able to enjoy them much further than what was already a standard. Whoever came up with, you know, a lot of the standard figs that you see in most nursery catalogs today that are very common, a lot of people have them in their yards, they did a great job. I mean, I'm going to be honest, like there are some pretty darn good selections that were made. Whoever came up with, or at least really made White Marseille popular, maybe it was Thomas Jefferson, whoever made, um, you know, Hardy Chicago popular at one point, whoever made Villette de Bordeaux popular at one point, whoever that original fig grower was, they did a fantastic job. I mean, those are incredible figs, but we can do a little better. And that's what I'm trying to do is to, you know, bring those genetics to everyone's attention. Obviously there's millions, thousands, I should say, of apple varieties, right? Most people are now coming to the conclusion that we should try to grow other apples. And a lot of people have now all these different weird varieties of apples in their yards and it's really expanding. The same thing is gonna happen with figs. We're trying to get this fig 10 years down the road to be in many, many people's yards. And yeah, like I said, it's probably a bit pricey right now, um, but very soon a lot of people are gonna have this fig. And I, like I, you know, I, I really did. I took the leap of faith in this one. I planted so many of them to try to get this around to as many people as I could, um, anticipating that this variety was gonna be as amazing as I thought it was and that Thierry had really written about and there was the reputation already sort of of it in Europe. I took the chance and it's really turning out to be pretty much everything I hoped for, you know? Um, so that's kind of it here, guys. Um, yeah, I, I'm just glad that we can, I'm really happy to be able to share this with you guys and make people more aware of this variety. Uh, even if this only gets, you know, a thousand views or whatever it is, uh, people now know about it. And then from there, it's going to spiral out of control. So. We'll see you soon. Take care, guys.